Hey everyone, it's Kirk Maston from Maston Labs, and on today's episode of What Makes This Photo Great, I'm going to be connecting photos from our community to famous photographers of the 20th century to show you some really cool techniques to make your photography better. So to start out with, we've got this image by Andre Schramm, fantastic community member. He's edited, edited it with HP5 from the Artists in Black and White pack. And what I love about this photo, you know, I, you, you see me often go off about, you know, composition, uh, but what I really love about this photo is the tension in it. The tension of balancing on his hand, this, this amazing athlete, and just kind of this, I don't know, you can, you can almost see this energy uh, coming from top to bottom where he's just balancing all this weight on his hand, and that is just incredible. Also, there's some really cool uh, shapes in here. There's this triangle along with this uh, kind of through line through his body, through his hands. And it just, it's an image that holds a lot of tension. This is a very specific moment. And that is why I want to link it, link this photo up with the past uh, with Henri Cartier-Bresson. So if you haven't checked out this photographer, he is kind of the, the father of the decisive moment. It's a concept that didn't really exist in photography before Henry Cartier-Bresson, and now we use it all the time to get really great photojournalistic shots. But it's kind of that peak moment of action, and that is what I want to kind of connect in your minds with the photo that Andres did. So this photo by Henry Cartier-Bresson was kind of the first photo that showed that peak moment of action. It was this man jumping off this ladder over this um, you know, little puddle of water, and again, we've got this kind of tension point right here where he's almost touching the water, but not quite. And there's all this really nice forward momentum right here. I mean, this photo, you, you might not think it's like the, the most amazing photo in the world, but when it was taken, it was groundbreaking because no one had really ever thought about finding tension in a photo intentionally through a decisive moment, a peak moment that makes the photo unique. And that is something that Andres has in this photo. And I love it, I absolutely love it. As far as lighting goes, you know, it's daytime. He was shooting uh, a little bit, you know, into the light. He's a little bit underexposed, but there's a lot of detail here. I think it looks like he dodged and burned uh, the chest and some of the arm here to kind of bring out more detail in this person, uh, but it's just fantastic. So if you get a chance, check out Henry Cartier-Bresson and see how you can use this tension in this decisive moment in your photography, because it is very powerful. No two people will ever be able to make this same photograph exactly the same way because of this moment. So I love that. Okay, so moving along. Oh, and another, here's another example of Henry Cartier-Bresson's photography. And again, you can see that tension. You know, this little baby is being held up by this hand. I love this stuff. Really, really good stuff. Okay. So moving on, we've got a photo by Dale Schmidt from the Mass Labs community. Uh, he edited this with C200 from the Lifestyle Everyday Pack. Really good choice of film. It's got kind of a, a grittiness to it, but also it's very realistic and very warm, and it's just perfect for this studio shot. What I love about this shot is that we've got some really, really nice symmetry here. We've got his arms going up to the, the guitar, and then that's kind of mirrored by his legs down here. And then we've got this nice through line through the entire image. And you can look on either side of the image and it's, you know, kind of the same shot, um, or kind of the same, you know, same image, like if you were just to split it in half. You can see that he's sitting in the corner of two V flats, kind of going back like this. So I was to draw the background behind him. Uh, it's just a beautiful classic studio setup. And the first thing that I thought of when I saw this photo was the photographer Irving Penn. Irving Penn, another massively important photographer in the history of photography a brilliant fashion photographer, still life photographer, and he often also used this kind of lighting pattern. So I'm, I'm going to just go out on a limb here and say that this was lit with a beauty light. So we've got this light kind of coming down right on top of this musician's face, like right in front of him. 
Um, and it's kind of like this. I just pulled this from the internet, but you see there's a beauty light here in the middle. That light really is a nice kind of soft look. This still has a lot of definition because it isn't this giant soft box. It's still, you know, relatively small compared to like a giant soft box, but the angle that it's coming down at gives you really nice dimensionality. <laughs> I'm glad I could say that word. That's a hard word. Uh, to this person's face. It's not so soft that we lose like the definition of the cheeks, but it is soft enough that we can see into his eye sockets and it gives him really good catch lights and really dimensional lighting coming down on his hands and on the guitar. It really fades off down here at the background, but that's okay. And the light is also hitting these, these V flats in the background. So great lighting pattern. Okay, so Irving Penn, Irving Penn, a little side note here. Irving Penn uh, did a lot of really amazing projects in his lifetime. But one thing that he did for a while were these corner portraits. And it, the, when I saw Dale's photo, I immediately thought of these corner portraits. So Irving Penn had a little corner of a studio where he had arranged these V flats really, really tightly. So not even in a 90 degree angle, but just super tightly. And he would put his subjects there. I mean, here's like Salvador Dali, the, the Duchess of Windsor, no big deal. <laughs> I mean, like some of the most famous people ever. Um, but he would put them in this corner and just let them be, let them express themselves. Some people like to back up into the corner and feel comforted. Some people like to come out of the corner like Salvador Dali and actually confront the photographer and take up space. You see he's taking up a lot of space sitting on that rock or block under him. Um, it really allowed for these subjects to express themselves and it's just a really interesting idea to use a corner view studio to base an entire series around. So when I saw these, or when I saw this photo, it immediately reminded me of Irving Penn and this corner portrait series. I don't know what kind of lighting uh, Irving Penn used, but I think it's probably very similar, or perhaps it was some kind of skylight uh, at the top of the studio pr providing like really soft, even lighting from the sky straight down, but very classic classic work. Okay, we're gonna move on down here to another uh, photo that I just absolutely love. This is by Laura White, and it's edited with Tri-X, classic film. Tri-X from our Adventure Everyday Pack. Um, I'm a photojournalist, well, I was a photojournalist for many, many years, and I love shots like this. They're very, very clever. They tell they tell a huge story. They tell an expanse of story over decades in one photo. This is from a larger shoot of a, of a married couple, a senior married couple. I think they're in there probably in their 80s. And this is a picture of them on their wedding day. And they're holding it. You have this really nice juxtaposition of age and time here. So you have them as they're young, but you can also see their skin and their hands and you can see their age. And it's amazing because you, you don't you don't see their faces in this photo. You see, well you do, you see their faces in this portrait down here, but then you see the passage of time taking you all the way to the present with their skin. And this little wedding ring here too. That's just fantastic, great detail. I love this photo. I always looked for storytelling moments like this when I was a photojournalist and I'm very impressed by Laura's work here. Um, compositionally, it's it's got a really nice flow to it. We've got kind of a mirror of arms here, kind of opposite each other. So one coming in from the top, one coming in from the bottom. But there's a really nice repetition here, and then it's all connected by this by the picture frame, the shape in the center. And I think that is just compositionally just really, really nice. Um, normally, you know, people don't like to cut off people's heads. It became kind of trendy for a while, but we're not really cutting off their heads because we see them again here. So I, those are things I just love about this photo. Now, who did this remind me of? Well, a lot of really great photojournalists, but in particular, it reminded me of Dorothy Lang. Dorothy Lang was a photographer who worked for the Farm Security Administration in the United States in the 40s, 30s or 40s, uh, documenting the Great Depression. Um, she went around to, you know, farms, uh, you know, different 
places where people were picking apples, vegetables, things like that. Uh, people kind of traveling along the railways and capturing what America was like at that time. And she just took a very honest and straightforward approach, just coming up to people and asking them uh, for their photograph and letting them tell their story in their own words. And the migrant mother photo is by far her most famous photo. I mean, everyone watching this probably knows this photo. Um, but she also took a lot of more kind of just real life photos like this, just on her journey across America during the Great Depression. They're very honest, very straightforward. Um, there's no real visual tricks happening here. There's no like, um, you know, extreme shallow depth of field or anything like that, or any kind of special lighting. It's just showing details, showing a story, just very, very straight up. And that is what I see in this photo by Laura White. It's just unvarnished truth and it's beautiful. It's very, very nice. Okay, so let's move on here to something completely different. If you are a wedding photographer, you will probably love this part um, or just any kind of editorial fashion photographer uh, who likes a lighter style. So this photo is by Lucine Hakobayan. It's edited with Fuji 400H from probably our most popular pack of all time, which is Fuji Original. And it's just a beautiful light and airy image, perfectly lit with natural light. The styling is perfect. The, just the, the wardrobe, everything I love about it. Um, as far as composition goes, I mean, immediately there's this fantastic S coming through here. I mean, it's just, amazing and then it's mirrored again on this side and that that is just such a nice shape um it's and again it's even mirrored right here so her face is partially obscured so we've got we've got all these s's coming through the photo and i love that i love that there's just really wonderful composition i usually don't like photos where people are upside down my brain just doesn't like it, but it works here. My, my eyes are drawn right to her eye and her, her mouth, her lips. And this being the darkest part of the photo is gonna draw you in. It's, it, sometimes it's a bad thing. I, I often call it like a black hole. There's something really dark in a light and airy photo. It's like a black hole and it's sucking all of your attention there. And usually it's some dumb thing in the background, you know, like an out of focus tree. But in this case, it's a face. That's great. I want to be drawn right here, right to her, her, to her expression, her spirit. So really, really good. Okay. So how does this relate to other photographers? Well, this is a more recent photographer, certainly in the history of photography, but there is a photographer named Elizabeth Messina, who I highly recommend uh, looking up, who is kind of the, I don't know, the person who started, I would say, the light and airy look within wedding and engagement photography, but her work spans all the way across into like fashion photography. And Elizabeth's style is just very ethereal. It's very, very light and airy and perfect. Um, it's, it's, it feels natural, but it's also styled and it's very intentional. And I felt that I got that, that vibe from Lucine's photo here. So this is Elizabeth Messina's photo. She shoots all on film um, and uses Fuji films, I believe, I think, Fuji 400H. And uh, I know that she used to shoot 800Z, which is no longer made, which is another Fuji film. But this is all window lit, all natural lighting. Really, really simple, light and airy palette. Again, we've got, you know, the darkest part kind of drawing you in, but that's good, that's her face. And then we've got just beautiful window light coming in from the side. So a few more examples would be like this photo here. There's a backdrop. Again, I believe it's all naturally lit and we're staying within this light and airy palette, just like the original photo here. And this is an example of what I mean by natural light. You get it just a beautiful, you know, fabric background, linen, whatever you want. And then you've got natural light coming in from the side. You are never just as a side note, you are never, ever, ever 
gonna get a photo like this in bad lighting. You can't, you can't edit a photo to look like this or this or this in bad lighting. You either need just a beautiful, huge, soft, you know, window light window, a window with window light, natural light coming in, diffused, huge source, or you need to very carefully create light using a giant octo box or, uh, or octo bank or giant, giant soft box, a huge light source with really nice clean light to get a look like this. So I would do something like this because I'm, I'm not really a master of strobe lighting. Um, I like natural light, so I'd probably do this. And I know that um, Elizabeth Lucina used that a lot, and I'm assuming that Lucina or Lucine did as well. Okay, moving on. We've got this amazing photo by Sean Smith. Um, it, I, I loved it. I, I love it, and it didn't really get as much attention as I thought it would in the in the Mass Labs community. But I just had to pull it for this video because it's got everything that I love. It's it's a real moment. It's beautiful. It's touching, um, and the lighting is so dramatic. This is when black and white really shines. And Sean used a Delta 3200, which is a kind of a glowing grainy film. So this is this is the Masson Labs emulation of it, but the actual film has a very chunky grain pattern and, it, and it's very luminous and it's just perfect on this photo. So you've got a very simple photo, lots of skin, simple, simple uh, backdrop, you know, it's just like a black backdrop, no complicated patterns really, these are nice big shapes. So you can really see that grain and it's perfect. Now, what I love about this photo and what's gonna bring me to my next kind of famous photographer is the lighting pattern. And I'm gonna say without having ever talked to Sean, but just by looking at this, we've got a giant softbox right off camera, right over here somewhere. Whoops, look at that nice arrow. And it's just wrapping around them falling off to complete black over here. There is no light over here at all. It's all coming from this side. And that gives you that really dramatic lighting and it happens to fall right on her face, which is perfect, and on this hand. And the face and the hand are the photo for me. I don't really see the guy too much over here. I just see a little bit of his hair, but it doesn't matter because this moment right here, this peace and calm is what's being focused on with that light. Now, who does this remind me of? This reminds me of one of my favorite photographers of all time named William Coupon. He did so much album artwork for all kinds of photographers like Paul Simon, uh, Paul McCartney, um, Miles Davis, all kinds of people. He's photographed Bill Clinton, all kinds of people. And what I love about William Coupon is that for his entire career, he used this Belgian linen backdrop and one light. That's his entire setup for almost his entire career. The only thing that's changed is his camera. He used to use a Rolly, like a, a, you know, a square six by six or a, you know, six by six camera. This is a, just like a little digital camera, whatever. That's not so important, but the lighting setup is important. And it's kind of the same pattern as this. You'll see as I scroll down. So here's Jeremy Irons. You see that really nice, side lighting coming in, just really, really soft. And then here is Miles Davis. I mean, it's just, you just can't, it's just perfect. You don't need a lot of, a lot of stuff in your photo. You don't need to overthink it. It can be just a human spirit with a beautiful light source, right? That is nice. That is so nice. So good job, Sean. I love it. Okay, let's talk about something completely different. Couldn't be more different. So I, I call this like the mundane, or I don't know, mundane style, or just making the, the everyday thing beautiful, um, things that people would normally overlook. This is by William Livesay, or Livesay. This is edited with Portra 400 from the Portra Original Pack. Portra 400 is one of my favorite films of all time. It's very warm, it's got a little bit of yellow in it, kind of in its base, uh, which, which works really good with like lighter skin, but also with a lot of landscape photos, if you wanna have kind of that, that nostalgic warmth in it. Now, 
when I saw this photo, I was super excited because it is, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on. We've got just complete depth of field, like completely uh, closed down. It's probably shot at like, I don't know, F22 or something. It's like sharp all the way from the closest point to the farthest point. And boy, oh boy, that is like so gutsy these days. Everyone loves to just kind of lean on that super shallow depth of field. But what I love about this is that by leaving the photo wide open, or uh, not wide open, stop down so that you can see all the detail, you get these fantastic layers and information. There's a lot of information. We've got information here, kind of the closest layer with this sign. We've got this fence back here, kind of on the same plane as this sign up here. And then we've got the background. And it's, it's a very complicated photo, but it makes something ordinary look extraordinary. I've also got a lot of very interesting, powerful lines coming through. So we've got these lines, kind of like perspective lines, coming back to the horizon. And that just kind of pulls your eyes down until you hit the sign of this, I'm gonna say it says Jamaica Motel maybe, until you get to the sign that says Jamaica Motel, and then it pulls your eyes back up to the sign. I, I love that. And then we've got the detail of the address right here too. That's cool. I love reading these things. Free internet. Lots of lots of information here. It makes something ordinary look extraordinary, which brings me to our next legendary photographer. William Eggleston. And he's standing in front of a McDonald's with a, I don't know. Again, probably like a Hasselblad or something. Uh, a medium or large format camera because he is out looking for color and looking for beauty in the everyday. And I love that about him. Here is some of his work. This is just, I love it. It's, it's so beautiful in its own way. I mean, it's just, this is just like a pink, I don't know, closed down lemonade stand or something, but the color palettes are incredible. And William Eggleston almost single-handedly made color photography an art form. It was not considered really artistic until he went out and did it for non-commercial purposes, focusing on a color palette. And that is why I like this photo too. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Makes This Photo Great. If you have any topics you would like me to cover in terms of how to evaluate or critique photos, please let me know. And if you've enjoyed this, watch all of my other What Makes This Photo Great videos on YouTube and be sure to link, or <laughs> to link, be sure to like and subscribe. That would make me thrilled. And until next time, have a great day and please keep making beautiful photos.